Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to this service of morning prayer on the fourth Sunday after Trinity. My name is Alec, I'm the Rector of East Barnet and St Mary's Church East Barnet is not yet open for public worship on Sundays. We are working out how to best and most safely make that happen. But it is open on Wednesdays from 10 till 12 for private prayer. While we are closed, we've experienced a shortfall in donations to the church. And St Mary's, because of all its work in the community and because of its staff, costs about £2,000 a month to run. If you'd like to give toward the work that St Mary's is doing in the local community, there are plenty of opportunities to give. Your time, your talents, your commitment. But if you'd like to make a financial donation, then our new website, stmarysestbarnet.org slash giving, is the easiest way to help support the church in this time of financial hardship. Whatever you choose to give, and however you want to be part of our community, I do hope that you will join in with this service of Sunday morning prayer today. Words will appear on the screen to help you join in, and a complete order of service is available in our weekly News from St Mary's email. And you can get that by contacting the parish office. The order of service is also available in the link below this video. And by clicking that, you can open it in your browser and print it either as A4 sheets or as an A5 booklet. In that News from St Mary's email, there are a lot of other excellent resources to help you with your spiritual life at home. And as I said, please contact the parish office if you'd like any more details of that email or if you'd like to join its distribution list. As we begin our act of worship, we turn our hearts to penitence. We remember that we have still to learn from the Lord a deep wisdom. By unlearning our pretense of knowledge and self-reliance, by unlearning our desire to appear to be independent, one from the other and all from God, we have to learn to rest only in the gift that is the service of the Lord. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy upon us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the world made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. This morning our hymn is, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say.
Our first reading is from the book of the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 to 12. And both our readings are read by Roger and Heather Melling. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughters of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off. And he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle is the Song of Deliverance. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. On that day you will say, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name, make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing God's praises, who has triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the world. Shout and sing for joy, you that dwell in Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our second reading comes from the Gospel according to St Matthew, chapter 11, verses 16 to 19 and 25 to 30. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent, and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Lord, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all that you are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel Canticle is the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father, Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, 
for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A gift from infants. When you meet a baby for the first time, no matter how many other infants you have seen, and no matter what your relationship with them might become, they'll greet you in a way that makes you catch your breath. Now, perhaps that will be by screaming until their features screw up and their faces darken with what, in an adult, would appear to be an incandescent rage. Perhaps it might be by spraying you with an assortment of bodily fluids, as occurred to a friend of mine who was foolish enough to wear white trousers when holding a newborn without a nappy. Perhaps it will be when they reach out to hold a finger of your hand, grasping it with their own tiny hand, connecting with you through the vulnerability of their touch. This moment of connection, which almost always evokes a strong emotional response in the adult who receives it, is in fact an automatic characteristic of most human infants, and it is called the Palmer grasp reflex. It may have developed long ago in our evolutionary history as a method of ensuring that the offspring of our ancient ape ancestors could cling on to the hair of their mother monkeys as they travelled through the jungle. To a modern Homo sapiens who has experienced it, though, that tight little grip is easy to interpret as a sign of greeting and emotional connection. There's a symbolic resonance between the way a baby's hand curls tightly around an adult's finger and the emotional impact of this moment of meeting a new life and becoming connected with it. I think that might be because the youngest of babies have absolutely no desire to conceal the reality of who they are when starting to form relationships in these little yet powerful ways. Just starting to work out who they are, they are not yet wise to the fact that human society places great emphasis on concealing our real identities and on the rawness of our relationships beneath layers of slyness and self-interest, and the deception of ourselves and others. And so there seems to be an honesty and a truthfulness which challenges the dissatisfaction of a grown-up life that is all embodied in the simplicity of an infant's touch. A huge quantity of future stories and relationships also seems to telescope in on that quiet moment of greeting. And the reverse is also true. For now, when I'm holding the hands of my slightly older children, and they always seem to be strangely sticky now, uh, in order to help them cross the road or to drag one of them off the other, I can feel an echo of the joy of our first meetings, of the simple blessing of our connection from its earliest moments, reverberating in the memory of the simplicity of an infant's touch. The preaching of John the Baptist and his imprisonment for angering Herod is the wider context of chapter 11 of Matthew's Gospel. The connection between John and Jesus reminds me of the way they are said to have first met in Luke's Gospel. And if the image of that moment in some iconography, such as the wall painting of the church of Timios Stavros in Cyprus, there's not, sadly, an early depiction of the Palmer grasp reflex there, but instead there is a similar vulnerability of encounter being expressed. And there is a similar telescoping of time, trying to tell a great story in one moment because of the significance of this encounter. 
that wall painting depicts Mary and Elizabeth. And in a sort of medieval equivalent of a prenatal ultrasound, it reveals Jesus and John being carried in each of their wounds. They are brought close by the embrace of their mothers and by the open affection of the relationship between Mary and Elizabeth. At that centre of the embrace between two women, John and Jesus are quite literally exposed in the most vulnerability of states. And both are seen in utero as tiny, weak figures. And yet Jesus raises his impossibly small and delicate fingers there in a sign of blessing to John. When I read that Jesus said important lessons were revealed by God to infants rather than to those who consider themselves wise, the significance of this image also echoes in its simplicity, for it shows that it was by an infancy that humans received a most unexpected gift of all from God. We were given a baby born most improbably in human flesh, and as the result of a most improbable pregnancy. We were given a man who, as a friend of gluttons and winos, received the most improbable people, who also received from him a gentle and healing blessing through his touch. The lessons taught by Jesus are often unexpected to us still, and a deep understanding of their meaning is rooted in the moment of meeting with him and being received there in unalloyed and mutual vulnerability. That openness to receiving such a powerful connection through weakness is itself his teaching, that all things come as gifts. Gifts given by God, freely and abundantly in his creation of all things. Gifts because they come not from our efforts to succeed or to make a littler world around us and in our own image, but which can be realised in the way we become open to receiving all things from the Father and the Son, who is revealed to us and who receives us. The aim of Christian living is, as St John Chrysostom said, to be freed from pride and follow after simplicity, or in other words, to be grasped by the experience of first meeting with the divine gift, and as the world whirls around us, to wonder at it. The Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of the parish of East Barnet and its people, gifts given one to another in love and mutual charity. We thank you that among our streets and in our homes, people are blessed by challenging times, but also by the opportunity to serve one another through them. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray particularly for all who live in Burlington Rise and Cambridge Close, Campstone Close and Capel Road. May they be a blessing one to another, even as they realise they are blessed in you. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the children who are part of our community in the parish of East Barnet, and particularly in the congregation at St Mary's Church and the community around St Mary's C of E Voluntary Aided Primary School. We give thanks for the way that they learn and we give thanks for the opportunity that they have to teach the wider community a depth and a breadth of love that comes from you. Thank you Lord for their joy and excitement in learning especially as some year groups start to return to school and bless them and their families as they anticipate a continuing lack of certainty over education and its normal provision over the summer and into the autumn term. We give thanks for all teachers, all who lead youth clubs and Sunday school groups, and for their willingness not only to teach, but to learn from those young people and children given to their charge and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the church. Within this diocese, for Alan, Bishop of St Albans, and Michael and Richard, his suffragans. Within the Church of England, we pray for Archbishop Justin, our Metropolitan, and as he approaches his enthronement, Archbishop Stephen. We pray that they will work together with the leaders of all churches, including Richard, the President of the Methodist Conference, John, General Secretary of the United Reformed Church, Francis, Bishop of Rome, and Bartholomew, the Ecumenical Patriarch, that we may be a church of learners and doers, eternally challenged and strengthened by the call to action which we find in your Gospel. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray particularly for the United Church of Pakistan and for Humphrey Peters, the Bishop of Peshawar and the moderator of the Church of Pakistan. May those of us who are members of the Church of England learn from the experience of the uniting churches as we seek to go deeper into ecumenical partnership with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And may we who are members of the Congregation of St Mary's East Barnet Learn that devotion as we seek a deeper partnership with Barnet Brookside Methodist Church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that this Holy Spirit of healing will be known by all those who are sick and troubled. We pray for Trevor and Luke, Janet and Angela, Deborah and her family, Jilly, Don and their family, Terence and Jean, Pauline, Raymond, Becky, Chris, Janet, Tom, Lisa and the Wickenburg family, Prim, Barry, and as she takes her first steps into faith, Faye. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are dying and for those who have been bereaved, that they may be comforted by the presence of the resurrected Christ and the promise of love brought back to life, which he holds out for all who know the shadow of death. We pray for the family of Agneta, for all who remember the victims of the COVID-19 pandemic, for all victims of terrorism and violence, and for those who suffer after the road traffic collision which occurred in our parish earlier this week. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, 
increase and multiply upon us in your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As Jesus taught his followers and his friends, we simply pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Please do tune in to our broadcasts of morning prayer on Sunday mornings again next week when the Dean of St Albans, the very Reverend Geoffrey John, will be our guest preacher. And if you are able, join us at 10.30 on Sunday mornings for Coffee Without a Rota, a chance to connect and catch up with the St Mary's community.